Welcome to SCI 740 Sports Talk and Entertainment with Isaac and crew. My name is Jabari Garrett. And I am Isaac Chair. And we're about to jump right into sports. So, the NBA Finals. Who you got winning the championship? As much as I want to see them win. Who is them? Okay. okay. Um, but I have to go with the Warriors. They're just too talented. They got out to a 3-1 lead last year. And then they added the best scoring small forward in the game. So, I have to go with the Warriors. As much as I want to see LeBron bring this one home, I have to go with the Warriors. They're too talented. They're just too talented. Mm, I don't know, because, I mean, LeBron efficiency has been um, out, of his, out of this world. I mean, it's the highest of his career, and, I mean, he's playing unstoppable. Um, but the Warriors have led almost every category when it comes to team stats. But still, I just feel like this isn't going to be about who has higher – team stats coming into this uh, championship uh, series, I think it's going to be about an X factor. And I think the X factor is either going to be Kyrie and Steph or Kevin Love and Draymond. What do you think? Well, we all know Draymond is going to out who Kevin Love is not even a question. Kyrie, he's obviously got the upper hand on Steph Curry because he used to working on defense on like Steph Curry. Uh, the really X factor is going to be the benches. The Warriors, they've had one of the best benches at the towards the end of the year. The first in offense, second in defense. So they can drop four they can drop one forty on you and still hold you tonight. So um, yeah. So the Warriors just too talented. Probably the most talented team to ever play in the finals. Um, and you talked about the benches. I know LeBron helped his team gain more support on their bench as well towards the end of the um, season, you know, them trying to get Darren Williams, which they did, uh, Kyle Corver, which they did, and they already got a mine coming off the bench. They got RJ. So, I mean, like, their bench is pretty solid so far. Um, so, I mean, that's a good idea, but Kevin Love, I know you said Draymond is going to out hoop him, but Kevin Love, Draymond hasn't faced Kevin Love the way Kevin Love's been playing. Kevin Love hasn't played well every. Uh, even before he faced Draymond in the previous matchup. But Kevin Love has more confidence in his playoffs. He's been playing better, he's shooting better, and he's showing that his shooting is out the world as well. He's showing us why he won a three-point contest before. Okay. Now, you're right. Draymond has to face Kevin Love. In the West, he's facing bigger and better big men. The West holds the best big men in the league. Anthony Davis, DeMarcus Cousins, Carl Anthony Towns. All of which play better than K-Love has. Draymond isn't guarding them, though. Okay. Zaza no, is. No, no. No. Okay, so you telling me. Draymond is not guarding Anthony Davis. Anthony Davis. No. So, so you going to put Zaza on Anthony Davis and then Draymond, Draymond on DeMarcus small. Cousins? You going to put Zaza on Anthony Davis and Draymond on DeMarcus Cousins? Genius. Thank you. I mean, that's a mismatch of both ways, is it not? No. Anthony Davis and DeMarcus Cousins. Both he people can play the center position. Draymond, Green Draymond is undersized for both of them. Draymond Green can hold his own. He's shown, he's shown that in the past. And I mean, uh, as far as those matchups, Draymond hasn't really faced neither one of them being on the same team like as a full game. When they, were, they, when, they fa when they played each other, Draymond wasn't playing the whole game. It was towards the later end of the season. So with them both big men being on that team, Draymond hasn't really faced them. So. But he, okay, but he's faced them by himself, and he's guarded both of them, and he's held his own. 
Now, K Love, he's obviously not the same player he was in Minnesota. Obviously, Anthony Davis and Demarcus Cousins and Carl Anthony Towns and all the big men in the West are better than K Love and has been playing better than K Love. That's all I'm saying. All right, let's move on to the next topic. Um, MVP for the finals. Who do you got? If the Warriors win, Kevin Durant. Like I said, thousand times before, KD's he's carried this team in the playoffs. It doesn't really matter what you say about Steph Curry's efficiency rating. They haven't played nobody. They haven't played nobody. Name name the best point guard they've played in the playoffs. Dame Lillard. Dame Lillard. Okay. After that. Nobody. Well, they only. Pat, Pat, I mean, the Mills? playoffs. Patty Mills. You said the best. I mean, like it's Dame Lillard, really. Okay. And because Spurs didn't have nobody, and Patty Mills. Both, both of these dudes. No, both of these teams have had no competition in getting to the finals. True. The probably is probably the easiest walk to the finals in league history. The Warriors they lucked up with injuries to Kawhi. The Cavs they just they're just too cold in the East. The East really is full of scrubs. They can't hold their own against LeBron. So it's just you you can't say efficiency because they didn't play nobody. They didn't have anyone that they really have to watch out for. So. I have to go with KD if Warriors win, LeBron if Cavs win, obviously. All right, and I think I'll go with LeBron, of course, if Cavs win. And, you know, of course, because LeBron is LeBron. He's been playing the best on the Cavs team. He's led them here. Um, I mean, one game, Kyrie showed up. But, uh, well, I mean, Kyrie's been showing up uh, towards the later end more of this playoffs. He's been Le- LeBron hold it for the beginning of the playoffs. But, I mean, LeBron's carried them all the way. Kari hasn't. So what I mean by that is LeBron efficiency rating has been higher than anyone, like I said, and higher than any time of any, the highest of his whole career. So like I said, LeBron, of course, is the um, pick if the Cavs win, if the uh, Warriors win. Um, I really, I, I would assume Steph because they haven't played yet. So it depends on who goes off in this championship. Steph doesn't show up in the playoffs, but he has the finals. Especially when he has competition. He, he's not used to it. And Steph has something to prove it. this year, though, as well. I mean, because a lot of people no, blame KD Steph. And Steph does, too, because KD, KD does. But, you know, Steph, he was the reason why they lost with the turnover he threw last year. So, I mean, it should be a good thing. But let's go on to the next um, topic. Um, what is LeBron legacy if uh, they win the championship? Is he better than Jordan? Yes. Even though he's had problems in the clutch. You know, only four walk-off shots. You know, earlier in his career, people saying he just didn't have it. He still doesn't have that killer instinct, if you ask me. Um, it's just, he has to, if he beats this team, he has to leave from MJ as the greatest of all time. So you saying all this stuff, um, like he still doesn't have this, he's not this, but yeah. And I mean, why are you saying yeah? Just because it's this team or what? Because it is team yeah? and just how LeBron has played in the past. And just looking at this, the team that LeBron has, you have, you have to give credit to the team that's around him. You know, Kyrie, he's obviously going to get the clutch shot. So, like he did last year, game seven, you know. Right there, he's five for five game winning situations. So, it's just, he's if, if he beats this Warriors team, most talented team probably ever, he, he has to go down as the greatest of all time. Um. So if you were um, if you were drafting someone, who would you pick, LeBron or Jordan? In their prime, in their wait from the beginning. In their prime. In their, in their prime, prime. Jordan. I mean, like if you just knew what they would like Jordan. become, Jordan. Jordan? <laughs> yes. And why Jordan? As dominant as LeBron is today, I believe Jordan was just way more dominant in his time. Looking at how they played defense, it was much rougher. And just looking at how Jordan evolved his game, because when Jordan first came to the league, he couldn't shoot to save his life. LeBron still, LeBron can't shoot free throws to save his life, 67%. Yeah. He's not even shooting technical fouls no more. So he just lost all confidence in his free throw shooting. He's just not good at the free throw line, and that's a career low. Even at his best, 72 in Miami, that's still not good. MJ shot 85, Westbrook is shooting 85. So you pick MJ. Um, let me ask, who do you think is better to lead a team? LeBron or MJ? Better to lead a team as far as making other teammates better or getting... All categories. That's being the leader of a team. Who do you got? Leader of a team. Because, you know, making teammates better is in that category as well. So, just the better leader overall. Uh, leading a team, LeBron is a better playmaker. So, I have to go with LeBron. But I think, I think MJ's up there, you know? 
Okay. MJ is up there. You know he doesn't have as much assist as LeBron does. I think I think he's up there. It's just two different types of leaderships. It just depends on which one you def- you prefer. And how are they different? What's LeBron's leadership? What's MJ's leadership? Michael Jordan is more hard nosed. He's more Kobe. That's where Kobe got in. That's where Kobe got it from. Cause you know Michael Jordan, he tell you straight <laughs> up, you suck and you a scrub. You said MJ is more Kobe. No, Kobe is more MJ. I said okay. that is where Kobe got it from. Okay. Listen. Clean no, you did say MJ was more Kobe though, just to let you know that. So. But I turned around. And I said that's where Kobe got it from. So thank you. Don't add me. Um. <laughs> so Michael Jordan, he's more straight up. He tell you straight to your face. You a scrub, you suck, like he did to Steve Kerr, and that's been well documented. LeBron, he's more nice, he's more your friend. All right, so let's move into the NFL, actually. And Josh Norman, he's saying that um, this year, the division is gonna get ugly. Mm, do you think Josh Norman is the best cornerback in the NFL? No, you can bring him in here and I still say, no, he's not the best cornerback. Do you think he's one of the best? One of the best, no, system cornerback. <laughs> Wow. And why is he not one of the best cornerbacks? I just told you he's a system cornerback. He only plays one side of the field. I love Richard Sherman. Uh, just to play one side. Richard Sherman is one of the best as well. Just because you play one one side of the field, you have a team. So just because you play that one side of the field, if you're doing that job on that one side of the field. System cornerback. If you're doing that job on one side of the field, what does that mean? You're shutting down one side of the field, but you can have... And that's because that's where you're playing. That's there. where you're playing. But if you want to be a top quarterback, you got to follow everybody around. You can't defer to somebody else to guard the best raw receiver in the league in Julio Jones. And you... Because if, if they don't do that, they just make it easier for Julio and just put Julio on the other side and let him go out for however many he wants. And now, well, if you want to be if you want to be a top quarterback, you got to chase him around like the greats have done. Deion Sanders, Patrick Peterson is not a great, but Patrick Peterson, he does that. Um, and Josh Norman actually talked about this. Um, he can't do everything because he does what the coaching staff tells him to do. And if the coaching staff tell you to play on one side, then you do that. The coaching and he staff, said that. Like listen, he said, listen, he can't just go around. So Listen, the coaching staff knows players' weaknesses. And they know Josh Norman can't follow no player around for the full game because, you know, he's going to get exposed. So they only have But no you don't know that because he hasn't. Yes, because when he did follow people around, he was doing good. No. And you see what happened. That's when he was at Carolina. Antonio and when he left Carolina, you see what happened to their defense. Antonio Brown. When he, left, he, he followed Antonio Brown. And he gave up 126 to Antonio Brown. And he has over two inches. Richard Sherman Antonio did the Brown. same. Richard Sherman is not a good cornerback. That's what I'm telling you. Patrick Peterson is the best cornerback in the league. And why, is he, the and why is he the best? Because he, he follows them around and he gets Just results. No, it, it's he gets about results. Because you could have said the same thing for Richard Sherman. Come on now. All right, go go ahead. Well, I'm Isaac Chair with STI 740. <laughs> yeah, I'm Jabari Garrett. And we will see you guys later. You and your partner get the top five action on the first try. Both teams will win. Are you ready? I'm always ready. Okay, 20 seconds on the clock. We ask all the people that watch Miss Universe Pageant these questions. Who is your favorite celebrity? Steve Harvey. What is your favorite award show? Name a little award. What is the best season of the year? So I explain to some more earlier. If you get the top two answers, both teams will win a trip to the Hoodie Award. Are you ready? Yes, I am ready. Let's get an extra five seconds on the clock. Now the first question, what is the hottest month of the year? July. Okay. Name one of the hottest cities in America. Las Vegas. That is the top five. Guys, could you please go to our GoFundMe page and please, please, please support us and help us to go to the Neighborhood Awards. Change the media, change the mind. Quiet on set. Aliyah, take one. Uh, <laughs> 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 what is it? It's, uh, my two boys. Uh, it's been a great experience for them and for all the kids here. Uh, they've taught them so many things uh, behind the <laughs> behind the scenes, productions, uh, in front of the camera, uh, acting. Uh, interviewing sk- skills, uh, all sorts of things uh, led by Mr. Cherry and uh, Ms. Rachel Bitterman.
No more dependence on the government. We are depending on the people who believe that now is the time to reach our youths and give them a safe place to educate present and future hosts, directors, producers, writers, video techs, editors, news entertainment, and sports reporters, as well as news anchors who would otherwise never have the opportunity to develop due to the enormous cost of education. Do you understand what we are saying? It's free and it's because of your sponsorship. This also gives urban teens who normally wouldn't have the opportunity to be taught by the best motivators, life coaches, instructors, and educators who truly care. Currently, we are the first program consisting of only youth that co-produce, direct, host, film, and co-edits their own footage. With your help, there is no reason why we can't take these kids with idle time off the streets and give them a voice, a network that caters to youths to express themselves, sending them to different cities for interviews, hosting red carpet events, and creating their own form of media. Hello, I'm Isaac Cherry, and I'm an OCC pal. You want to become an OCC pal?